The new photo effects template on MuseThemes.com has been really popular, but we've had lots of users ask about how to edit the photos or how to add more photos to the gallery. So I thought I'd do a really quick video overview for you on just some tips and tricks that you can use to modify this template. So if I look in the main plan view, you can see how we split it up. Basically, you have a master page that contains the navigation for the entire site. And then above that, we have a separate page that contains all of these different galleries. You're not likely going to have a photography site that uses five different types of galleries. So what you'd probably do is just delete out all of the ones that you don't want to use. And let's say you like the full screen gallery option. You can right click on it and duplicate it. And what that will do is just create another version of it. You could call, you could call that full screen too. And then you can add different images in there. So that's what I'd recommend at least is for setting it up to start. I'm going to delete that extra page out. And I'll show you how the nav menu works. So we go into the navigation menu here. You can see the nav menu is visible at the top, but it's not visible when I preview the site. And I'll show you that right now. So when I preview it, it's on a mouse over it appears. So the way that we did that in Muse is with a composition widget. So if you kind of click on this widget, you can see it has some components here. On the left side, there's the trigger. Basically, this is the area you click or mouse over for the target to appear. Obviously on the right side here, we have the actual target and that you can see that little label appears. And within that target is where we placed our menu widget. So if you click on this widget here and you go to the options file and you turn off show light box parts while editing, it actually hides that bit of the composition so you can see what's behind it. Um, if you wanted to change this font or change the style of it, it's as simple as just clicking on any of the areas and let me click in there far enough so that we're actually on the label. And right now it's set to this font called Questrial and size 12, so you could change that to anything you want. The thing to remember when working with any of these widgets is sometimes they require multiple clicks to get into the area you want to edit. So don't just click once and start editing away. You need to click once, that selects the whole composition, then this selects the target, then this selects the menu, then this selects that menu item, and then finally you've selected the label. So it's pretty deep, but you can use your layers panel to help you a little bit. If you just uh, bring up the layers panel here, go into navigation, you can see there's a composition in there. If you bring up the composition, then you've got one trigger, and if I select that, it's that. And then we've got a target, and within the target, there's a menu within the menu, there's all the menu items. So this is a way that you can actually kind of get a little bit deeper without having to click 8,000 times. So if we bring up each of these items, you could directly select gallery only by using the layers panel. So that's a little easier. Okay, so now let's look at the individual photo effects. I think most people are pretty set on the gallery and the thumbnails because those are widgets that have been around for a long time, but the full screen one causes some trouble. So let's go into that page. Let me zoom out a little bit and I'll show you how this works. So when you're working with the full screen slideshow widget, it automatically takes up the full area of the page. You can't grab it and move it around or anything like that. Now you can transition between the images you have by just clicking the forward and next button. You can see how when I click on those, it moves between the images. And if I wanted to delete one of these images, all you need to do is make sure that you click on the image itself and delete it. When you do that, the image behind should appear. Now let me undo that and I'll show you something else. If you're not selected on this widget at all, like I was on the forward and back controls, but if you just click once on it and it says slideshow and you click delete, it's not going to delete just that one image. It deletes the whole slideshow. So that whole thing is gone. So again, to make that a little bit easier, you can use your layers panel, open up the full screen layer. We've, we've layered this all by the individual galleries bring up the slideshow layer, and then of course you've got the five images here, Forest 5, Forest 4, Forest 3, and if you wanted to delete, if you wanted to delete just one of those, then just make sure you've selected it and hit delete. That's it. So as far as adding your own images to this widget, there's a couple ways. One way I've seen people do is if you actually look in the assets folder for this, um, you, so you go to photos, you've got all of these photos included, you could change forest1.jpg, overwrite it, and then update the asset in Muse. And you can find that asset within your assets panel here, and it's just called 
Forest One. So if you've edited that, you'll see a little warning sign beside it. And if you right click it and you click update link, obviously I haven't changed it this time, but when you do that, it's going to update in the gallery. I think an easier way to be honest is just to select the options flyout panel and there's an add images button here that lets you just select a folder and it's going to automatically import them all into the full screen gallery. So that's that one. Let's now take a look at the other two complex ones which are parallax scrolling galleries. So if we go into this page, and again, I'm gonna zoom out a little so we have a bit of room to work here. You can see that all of the images are actually stacked on top of each other. But if I preview this page in the browser, when we scroll down, the images seem to swipe up and replace one above the other. And that's all done using parallax scrolling. So if we wanted to replace one of these images, the easiest way to do it is just select the image and you can see that there's a fill applied. If we select fill, the image is actually applied as a background fill right now. So if we were to select a different image to put in here, and I'll just click that button and go to the photo effects folder, and let's select say this beach image and click open, then it replaces it right there. So that's pretty easy. But how do we add more of these images? That's a good question. So the way that you can do that is if you just select the last image, you can see that it's got that little tail on it from having some parallax scrolling effects apply. If you just hold down the option key and drag it, you actually will just duplicate this image. Of course, I'm duplicating it over my text there at the bottom, but let's line it up at the bottom. I'm gonna delete this out for the time being. Okay, and now let's just replace this the same way. So we'll change the background fill. We'll set it to this beach number three Okay, and now if we preview the widget in the browser and we scroll down, you can see that our first image is indeed replaced. And when we get to the bottom, we're going to see that, um, you know, bushes or shrubbery kind of popping up and appearing. So that image has been replaced and we've added another one. You can go ahead and duplicate this down as many times as you want so that you can add an absolutely huge gallery in here really easily. Now, if you actually wanna take a look at how the scroll effects are done, um, they're in a bit of a different spot. They're not in the scroll effects panel on the right side because these are set as image fills. If you go up to the fill box and select scroll, this is where the motion is set. And you can see it's not very complex parallax. In fact, they're all set at 0000, zero, zero, zero which basically means it's not going to scroll at all. And that's why you're seeing the effect of the photo basically sticking to the top of the browser because it's not scrolling down at the same speed as a user would typically scroll. So let's look at the second parallax gallery, which is called Parallax 2, which is a little bit more complicated. So when I preview this in the browser, you can see that when I scroll down, images transition up and then stop directly on top of the one below. Again, this is done using parallax scrolling, but creating new images is a little bit interesting. So we could go ahead and easily replace one of these the same way as we've done before. We just select the fill box and change the fill image to something different. There you go, so that was simple. But let's say we wanna add more of these images. The thing you need to be really careful about with this is the depth of this tail at the top. So let's go ahead and duplicate the bottom one down just by holding, again, the option key and dragging it down. And let's just align this tail a little bit longer so that we've got a little bit of a gap here. And then let's preview it in the site. Actually, you know what, the first thing we should do is swap out the background so we actually see what the image is. We'll pick the guy on the bike there. Okay, now let's preview in the browser. So as we scroll down, everything looks good. But then we get to our last image and what happens? It stops short of the top. And the reason it's done that is because that tail isn't set perfectly. You also might wanna add a little bit of a gap here at the bottom so that you have some extra runway to work with. And let's tighten that up again. So basically this distance here that we're setting is the same distance from the top of the browser here to our first image. So the way that I actually kind of set that was, I just drew a box initially and I looked at the size of that box. So it was 138 pixels. So I set all the, basically these tails or these T-bars on the parallax photos to that same distance. 
the thing the nice thing about this is as long as you have one image done you can simply duplicate it down below align that to the very top click preview it's going to load up and there you can see it transitions perfectly and stops right in place so that's the photo effects template it's been super super popular and i'm really glad that everyone likes it i thought it was a great starter site for a photographer and these gallery effects are really fun to work with when the majority of the legwork is done for you and they're set up already if you have any questions or concerns about this template as always feel free to give us a shout at support at musethemes.com thanks